Hello everyone. So today I have come up with another topic of pharmacology that is centrally acting muscle relaxant or a spasmolytic. So any time it is asked as such a short note plus few of the individual drug like tizanidine or baclofen they can be also asked in the examination. So let's get started with the topic. So as you know the skeletal muscle relaxant they are the drug which is going to cause the relaxation of the skeletal muscle and basically they are used in the surgical relaxation then in a laryngoscopy endotracheal intubation and the muscle spasm so you can remember it as a mnemonic slim s stands for surgical relaxation l for the laryngoscopy i for the endotracheal intubation and m stands for the muscle relaxation so basically this is skeletal muscle relaxant they act by two way centrally and the peripherally centrally on the cns and the brain and peripherally mainly on the neuromuscular junction or directly on the skeletal muscle itself same way we can classify this skeletal muscle relaxant peripheral acting skeletal muscle relaxant and centrally acting skeletal muscle relaxant so on the peripheral acting skeletal muscle relaxant i have made a video so you can uh, go and watch it link will be given in the description box so today's topic is all about this centrally acting skeletal muscle relaxant so what are the centrally acting skeletal muscle relaxant or the spasmolytic the drug which is going to reduce the spasticity what is the spasticity spasticity that is the increased tone of the muscle along with that there will be the weakness so to reduce the spasticity in variety of the painful condition like it can be acute it can be chronic so acute you can see in the trauma very commonly seen in the trauma like ligament tear sprain whereas chronic that is commonly seen in the cerebral palsy spinal injury multiple sclerosis so in all these condition the spasticity of the muscle that is increased so centrally acting muscle relaxant they are going to reduce the spasticity of the muscle by acting at the spinal and the supraspinal reflexes so to understand the pharmacology of this centrally acting skeletal muscle relaxant so you must understand about the corticospinal tract the function of the corticospinal tract so this is a figure i have taken from the net so this is the corticospinal tract or pyramidal tract it consists of the two part upper motor neuron you can see in the figure green color so then it extends from the cerebral cortex yahan se cerebral cortex se leke that green color from the anterior horn of the spinal cord here it is going to make a synapse from here the another order the lower motor neuron that is going to start and this is going to make where and here we are talking about the skeletal muscles so it is going to inner with the skeletal muscles so two part they are there upper motor neuron and the lower motor neuron so these two part upper motor neuron and lower motor neuron they are the one which is going to control the motor function so motor function it depends upon the transmission of the impulses from the cerebral cortex to the anterior horn of the spinal cord and then from the anterior horn of the spinal cord to the skeletal muscle so this is the part anterior horn of the spinal cord this is the area where the upper motor neuron and the lower motor neuron they are going to communicate with the each other let's have the broader picture of this so this figure i have taken from the cadzen a standard textbook of the pharmacology you can see the same thing here this small box where the upper motor neuron ye wala box jahan pe upper motor neuron and the lower motor neuron they meet just i think now it's more clear so upper motor neuron this is a corticospinal pathway so upper motor neuron you can see here it is with the green color so broader picture here upper motor neuron and this red color star shape this is and here 
it is a little bit orange in color this red color motor neuron this is the ये आपकी ग्रीन कलर अपर मोटर है और रेड कलर दिस इज अ और यहाँ पे ऑरेंज कलर और लिटिल बिट ऑरेंज कलर लोअर मोटर न्यूरॉन दिस इज अ लोअर मोटर न्यूरॉन दिस इज अ यू मेक इट लिटिल बिट मोर क्लियर सो यू कैन सी इन द अपर मोटर न्यूरॉन वेरियस टाइप ऑफ रिसेप्टर लाइक अल्फा टू ग्लूटमेट एंड गाबा बी रिसेप्टर सो गाबा बी रिसेप्टर कैन ऑल्सो बी सीन इन द lower motor neuron other receptor which can be seen in the lower motor neuron they are the GABA A alpha 2 and A and B there is another neuron which is also making a connection with this lower motor neuron that is this inhibitory one here this can be shown here and here we have the inhibitory neuron GABA so this is going to act both on the lower motor neuron by interacting with the GABA A and GABA B receptor. Now what exactly happens? From the corticospinal pathway, the action potential that is generated in the upper motor neuron, aapka cortex se ye jo upper motor neuron from the cerebral cortex, the action potential that is generated. So impulse it is going to transfer through all that. So in the end what will happen? There is an influx of the calcium just like in other neurons now cell you see there is an influx of the calcium ion then what will happen whatever the vesicles they are there they are going to fuse with that and ultimately there is a release of neurotransmitter here the neurotransmitter which is released that is excitatory like glutamate is there then norepinephrine is there glutamate and norepinephrine they are will be released and they are going to act postsynaptically on the AMPA receptor and alpha 2 receptor so by interacting with this what they are going to do they are going to increase the sodium conductance in AMPA by acting on the AMPA receptor there will be increase in the sodium conductance and this lead to depolarization and same way with the norepinephrine what will happen there will be depolarization and this depolarization what it is going to cause it is going to cause the excitation of this muscle and ultimately there is a generation of excitatory postsynaptic potential which is going to cause the excitation of this there will be release of the ACH and this is going to cause the contraction of the muscle. Now coming to the another part now inhibitory neuron what it is going to do it is going to cause a release of GABA now this GABA it is going to act on both this gamma minor butyric acid this is going to act both on GABA A and GABA B in the figure only you can see GABA A that is GABA A is a ye figure mein aapko pata chal raha this is a iron channel linked receptor so the full name of this receptor is gaba a benzodiazepine chloride receptor now once the gaba it binds what will happen it is going to increase the frequency of the opening of this receptor and there is a influx of the chloride and that leads to the hyperpolarization then if it is going to bind with the gaba b receptor so you can see here in the figure only GABA B receptor they are 7 helix this they are the G protein coupled receptor what will happen with this they are going to increase the potassium conductance and again hyperpolarization will happen so with GABA A and GABA B where the GABA it is going to bind ultimately they are going to cause the hyperpolarization So this side excitatory and this side it is going to generate the inhibitory IPSP. So inhibitory postsynaptic potential. If it is inhibitory postsynaptic potential then what will happen? It is going to cause an inhibition of this and there will be no release of ACH and no muscle contraction. So this is about the 
physiology part of the corticospinal or functioning of the corticospinal pathway. Now, how the different different drugs they are going to act or the centrally acting skeletal muscle relaxant they are going to act. So, from this figure only it is clear that if we cause the hyperpolarization of this neuron, this lower motor neuron, if there is a lower motor neuron ki agar hyperpolarization ho jati, tab kya hota hai? then what will happen? The further impulses, this one, inhibitory postsynaptic potential will be generated. There will be no release of SEH, OEA release yoga and no contraction. This is what we want. So, majority of the centrally acting skeletal muscle relaxant, they act by causing the hyperpolarization or by generating the inhibitory postsynaptic potential. So, just see the classification. So, centrally acting skeletal muscle relaxant, they act by depressing the spinal and supraspinal polysynaptic reflexes involved in the regulation of muscle tone without affecting the monosynaptic reflexes which mainly mediate the stretch reflex. So, classification of the centrally acting, we have a benzodiazepine, we have a GABA mimetic under the benzodiazepine, we have diazepam, GABA may occur baclofen, central acting alpha 2 tizanidine, mephensin group and various miscellaneous group. Now to understand the mechanism of action of the centrally acting skeletal muscle relaxant, so again I will focus the same figure. So first group of drug is benzodiazepine, this one in a figure only you can see. So benzodiazepine, how they are going to act? They are going to act on the GABA A. GABA A receptor ka full form kya hai? That is GABA A benzodiazepine chloride receptor. Already I have told. So, jab GABA A is ke saath lagegi, then what will happen? This is the number one. Jis mein aapka diazepam aata hai. So, what will happen once the diazepam, it is going to bind. This is the ion channel link receptor. What will happen? There is a increased frequency of opening of this ion channel and there is an increased influx of the chloride ion. This leads to hyperpolarization. That's what we want. This is how diazepam group of drug they act. Second one is a GABA mimetic. So this is a GABA mimetic. Is aapka kya aagaya? Aapka is group mein drug aagi aapki diazepam. Now the second group of drug is GABA mimetic. So, GABA mimetic mein aapka aagaya. This is number 2, baclofen. So, baclofen, it is going to act on the GABA B receptor, which is a G protein couple receptor. So, this G protein couple receptor, it is present on both presynaptically, yaha pe bhi hai, and postsynaptically. So, GABA mimetic is baclofen. How the baclofen it is going to act? It is going to act through the GABA B receptor, which is a G protein receptor. So, GABA B presynaptically and post synaptically. So, presynaptically, agar ye presynaptically, it is going to decrease the calcium influx. Ab ye calcium influx agar nahi hoga, then what will happen? It is going to inhibit the release of the glutamate. Aapka glutamate nahi aega which is the excitatory neurotransmitter. Agar post synaptically yaha pe laga where again it is a G protein coupled receptor. So, they are going to increase the potassium conductance. So, it leads to hyperpolarization. So, in any way it is going to cause the inhibition of this lower motor neuron. Chai either hai ya either hai. So, there will be decrease in the glutamate or increase hyperpolarization. So, ultimately decrease the lower motor neuron activity. Once this activity it is reduced, there will be no release of the acetylcholine, no muscle contraction. Now, group number 3, this tizanidine, this is alpha 2 agonist. So, this is just like a clonidine, it's a uh, clonidine that also is a um, alpha 2 agonist. This is a congener of that. So, this drug, it is going to act here presynaptically. And this is also going to inhibit the release of this excitatory 
neurotransmitter and it facilitate the release of inhibitory inhibitory kaun sa like glycine so this is the three group of drug i have told now the fourth one is that is a mephensin group so number 3 is alpha 2 agonist tizanidine now four it is mephensin group this group it act non specifically isme aapke drugs aate hain carisoprodol clorjoxazone clormizonol and methocarbamol so they act non specifically they are going to decrease the level of sodium they are going to decrease the influx of the calcium by that they are going to decrease the excitation of or they are going to generate inhibitory post synaptic potential so there will be inhibition of this neuron so they have few of the like a few of them they have a sedative property few of them they have a hypnotic property few they have even anticholinergic uh, side effect they are also seen with this and then then next one is a miscellaneous under the miscellaneous we have a gabapentin pregabaline pro gaba pro gababite glycine hydrosilamide and rolizol so first three this you will be reading under anti epileptic they are going to increase the gabaergic transmission whereas this two hydrosilamide and rolizol they are going to decrease the glutaminergic activity so by that they are going to cause the relaxation of the skeletal muscle so this is about the uh, individual drug how these uh, centrally acting skeletal muscle um, drug they are going to act now coming to the important side effect what are the important side effect which is seen by this group of drug so most common most of the centrally acting uh, drug they show one of the important side effect that is sedation sedation is very commonly seen with almost all the centrally acting uh, drug by sedation that is seen because they are going to inhibit the polysynaptic reflex in the reticular site which maintain the wakefulness so that is the reason why the sedation that is seen with most of the centrally acting drug plus mephensin group of drug already i have told they show anticholinergic side effect and few of them they also show the high potential so that's about the side effect now where we are going to use this centrally acting skeletal muscle relaxant so important uses are they are used in the acute spasm they are used in the chronic spasm so acute muscle spasm jaise ki aapka aa gaya sprain tearing of the ligament along with the analgesic is very common it is available over the counter then torticollis back ache neuralgia anxiety and tension associated with increase in muscle tone here we are going to use the benzodiazepine like diazepam then chronic spasm which is associated with the hemiplegia paraplegia spinal cord injury stroke multiple sclerosis amyotrophic lateral sclerosis so in the tetanus also there is a muscle spasm that is increased there also we can give the diazepam then electroconvulsive therapy here also diazepam then in orthopedic manipulation there also we do it under the diazepam to align the bone so we can use the diazepam that's all about the centrally acting skeletal muscle relaxant if you like my video please subscribe my channel and put important comment in the comment section so that's all for today's topic